resuming debate, a reprise du débat, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. These are painful and heartbreaking days for the people of Ukraine. It's unbelievable to watch images of families fleeing the violence, of citizens volunteering, lining up to receive weapons to fight for their country, and of parents sending their children away to safety while they stay behind to defend Ukraine. In the last few days, the world has seen the defiance and strength of Ukrainians standing up for their freedom, independence, and sovereignty against the unprovoked aggression of a violent dictator. Their voices were joined by millions of people here in Canada and around the world, including thousands of Russians who took to the streets to oppose the war, many of them dragged away to prison. As the official opposition, Conservatives stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine and its people. And we condemn Putin and his gang in the strongest and harshest terms possible. Putin's ongoing invasion of Ukraine is the first major European conflict since the Second World War. It is a serious violation of both international law and our collective humanity. This amounts to the most serious threat to the rules-based international order since 1945. And because of that, it is a serious threat to global peace and security. That's why Conservatives fully support the actions taken by the government of Canada thus far. But we are calling on the Liberals to do more. On Saturday, we released our proposals for immediate additional action, and I would like to outline them for the members tonight. First, we are urging the federal government to expel Russian's ambassador from Canada right away. Second, we are asking the government to recall Canada's ambassador from Moscow. Thirdly, we ask the, the government to direct the CRTC to revoke the license of Russia today so that Putin's propaganda machine can no longer reach Canadian homes. We are glad that companies like Rogers, TELUS, Bell and Shaw have already done this, but we would like to see the federal government take more of a lead on this issue. Here, here. Fourthly, we believe Russia should be isolated internationally by urging their removal from organizations like the G20 and the OSCE. And fifth, we would like to encourage the government to implement visa-free travel from Ukraine to Canada to help families escape here for, to safety. The Ukrainian people do not want to be permanent refugees. They want to be able to live in a free, peaceful and sovereign Ukraine. But Canada can be a safe haven for them in this moment. The conservative Conservatives support Ukraine. The Russian invasion threatens peace, international order, and global security. That's why we support the Canadian government's actions. But we are calling on the government to take additional steps, such as strength, strengthening our defenses and committing to NATO against Russia's threats. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal government can't afford to take our peace and security for granted any longer. We need to take Putin's threats seriously. We need to make sure Canada is prepared to face aggression with the same level of determination we've seen in the Ukrainian people. That's why Conservatives are calling on the government to come forward with a robust plan to defend Canada's Arctic security and sovereignty. This includes modernizing NORAD's early warning system. It's also time that we fix Canada's long broken military procurement system. We must accelerate the national shipbuilding program and finally it's time to purchase F-35 jets. Here, here. In addition, we need to work in closer cooperation with Scandinavian allies and the United States to ensure Canada's north remains Canada's. Liberals have ignored our Arctic for six years, and this Russian invasion of Ukraine should be a wake-up call to get serious about Canada's Arctic. Mr. Speaker, Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine has highlighted another serious problem. Russia supplies as much as 40% of Europe's natural gas, and we're seeing them use this power to intimidate Europeans and Ukrainians. If supplies are cut, People can't heat their homes, entire industries will collapse, and Europe's GDP will plummet. Canada has the answer here. 
Canada is the world's fifth largest natural gas producer. But we can't export gas to our European allies because we can't get pipelines built. The Liberal government has failed repeatedly to recognize that Canadian oil and gas is the most, most ethical, most environmentally responsible oil and gas industry in the world. It is clearer than ever, Mr. Speaker, that Canada's oil and gas is vital to the security and sovereignty of both Canada and Europe. It's clearer than ever that when the Liberals stop, delay and hamstring Canadian oil and gas from being extracted, transported and sold both at home and abroad, the biggest winner in every way, shape and form is Putin. Canada and the world loses and Putin wins. Why in the world would we want to do anything to help Putin for fund his war chest? The Liberals need to stop putting up roadblocks to oil and gas development and exports. We need to get new pipelines built so that we can sell our energy to Europe and others and end Russia's monopoly on natural gas. Mr. Speaker, for over a century, Canadians of Ukraine descent have enriched our communities and our culture, especially in the prairies where I am from. Canada and Manitoba in particular share ties with Ukraine that cannot be broken by war and aggression. When Ukraine declared independence from the Soviet Union three decades ago, it was Canada, under a Conservative Prime Minister, that was the first country to recognize its sovereignty. We must honour that legacy. As Canadian parliamentarians, I know we honour that legacy. is tied to Europe, and Conservatives know that. Canada must strengthen our own defences and renew our commitment to the NATO alliance in the face of the threats from both Russia and China. As we speak tonight, Mr. Speaker, Ukrainian families are huddled in subway stations calling for our help, just as the British did during the Blitz over eight decades ago. A country that faced the horrors of the Stalin regime with the Haldemore but nonetheless emerged from the grasp of communist dictators, is again fighting off tyranny and violence. We must stand with them. The federal government has stepped up in the last few days, but there is more that can be done. As they say in Ukraine, Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. But let's do more than just say those words. Let's take action now and in the days and the months to come to do the right thing for Ukraine, for Canadians, and indeed for the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.